Quite often, InfoWorks tooltips are used to display data associated with the objects in a model. Because the tooltips are HTML based, they can actually do a lot more. In this session, we'll look at a way to use InfoWorks tooltips to open files. On my screen is an InfoWorks model representing a large commercial site plan. Let's assume that I'm in a management position responsible for the oversight of this property and all the buildings. I could use InfoWorks as a way to visualize the entire site and then use tooltips to drill down and access any of the ancillary files I may have associated with any of these objects. For instance, within this overall site is an urgent care facility. This building was designed using Revit. I'd like to add a tooltip to the building that will allow me to open the native Revit model. To do that, I'll select the building and then I'll right click and choose Properties. In the Properties dialog box, I'll click in the Tooltip field and then I'll select the Ellipsis button, I'll select the HTML tab, and right here is where I can add my tooltip. Now, what would that tooltip look like? On screen, we can see an example of the HTML syntax used to open a file. All I need is the file name and path and a description for the hyperlink. As a side note, if you're interested in using this text string, I'll add it to the video description so you can easily copy and paste it to your computer. Let's use this text string to create a custom tooltip. I'll start by opening Windows Explorer, and from here I'll navigate to the directory containing the Revit model. Once there, I'll click in the URL field and copy the file path to my clipboard. I will then bring up Notepad, where I have the original text string. I'm going to hit Enter a couple times to give myself some room, and then I'll right-click and choose Paste, because I need to edit this text a little bit. One thing I'm going to do is convert these from backslashes to forward slashes. And this very first one, I'm going to replace with two. Then I'll put a forward slash at the end, and then I'll add the file name. Back in Windows Explorer, I'll click on the file name twice to get access to the text. I will then drag across this, I'll right-click and copy. I'll come back to Notepad, I'll right-click and paste. This is all I need for the file path and name. I'm going to drag across this text, and then I'll right-click and cut, and I will paste this text between the quotes in the original text string. Finally, I'll come down and change the description to read Revit file. This represents the HTML code necessary to open that model. I am going to drag across this text. I'll right-click and copy it to the clipboard. I will then return to InfoWorks, and on the HTML tab, I'm going to right-click and choose Paste. If I click the Visual tab, we can see a preview of what that tooltip will look like. This looks good. I'll click OK, and then I'll come up and click Update to update the InfoWorks model. I will then click to close the properties, and I'll press Escape to deselect the building. Now, if I hover my cursor over the building, I'll get access to a tooltip that, when clicked, opens the original Revit model. Once the model opens in Revit, I can zoom in and orbit around. Since I'm viewing this building within the native authoring environment, I have access to everything that Revit provides. From here, I can view the floor plans or the elevation views, or I can review the attributes or dimensions for any of the objects in this model. When I'm finished, I'll click the X to close Revit. Now, it's important to note that I used Revit in this case, but I could have used this technique to open any file. This could just as easily have been a Navisworks file, or a Civil 3D model, or a Microsoft Word document. Let's take this concept one more step. Maybe I'd also like to add a hyperlink to some documentation associated with this building. I'm going to bring back Windows Explorer and Notepad. I'd like to create a hyperlink to this standards manual. Since these files are in the same folder, this original tooltip text will remain pretty much the same. In fact, it's already highlighted. I'm going to right-click on it and choose Copy. And then I'd like to add a carriage return. I'll do that by typing the less than symbol, BR, and the greater than symbol to create a break. And then I will right-click and paste the original tooltip. Now we can simply swap out the file name. Let's come up to Windows Explorer. I'll click on that file name twice. I'll drag across it and copy it to the clipboard. And then I'll come down to Notepad, and we will paste to swap out the original. I will then change the description to Standards Manual, and when I'm finished, I will select all of this text. I'll right-click and copy it to my clipboard. We'll flip back to InfoWorks. I'll select the building and right-click and choose Properties, and then I can click in the Tooltip field, and from here I can simply right-click and choose Paste to swap out the original tooltip. If I wanted to review things, I could click the Ellipsis button and see a preview of the tooltip. 
I can also jump to the HTML tab to review or edit the code. This looks perfect. Let me click OK. I will then update the model. We'll close the properties and I'll press Escape to deselect the building. This time, when I hover over the building, I have access to two files. I'm going to click to open that manual. And the file comes up in Acrobat Reader. From here, I can navigate to any of the pages. When finished, I'll close Acrobat Reader and we'll return to InfraWorks. Once again, I used a PDF manual for my example, but I could have used any documentation, from an employee directory, to a parts list, to a maintenance schedule. So the next time you're working with InfraWorks tooltips, try creating one that opens an external file. Leveraging this technique can be a great way to add even more value to your InfraWorks models. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.